When the Duterte administration assumed office in 2016, it pursued an ambitious socio-economic reform agenda that secured for the Filipino people some of the boldest and urgently needed economic and fiscal policies that have been held back for decades. Game-changing reforms were pursued to achieve a stronger and more inclusive economy. For too long, many Filipinos could not avail of basic services due to the lack of proper identification. With inclusivity as a top priority of his administration, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte signed into law the Philippine Identification System or FILSIS Act in August 2018. Mass registration began in October 2020, with over 60 million Filipinos from 86 provinces registered as of March 2022. Despite the challenges brought about by the pandemic, we accelerated the registration of the Philippine National ID to give every Filipino a unique and digitalized proof of identity. This will enhance the delivery of government services and promote financial inclusion and digitalization, giving more Filipinos access to opportunities that were previously out of their reach. In December 2017, President Duterte enacted the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion, or the TRAIN Law. The law reduced personal income taxes for 99% of Filipino workers, giving them much-needed relief after 20 years of non-adjustment in their tax rates. TRAIN also imposed higher taxes on unhealthy or so-called SEND products, thus increasing revenues to fund government social services and infrastructure projects. Narinig ko nga nung sinabi ng boss ko na napirmahan ng Pangulong Duterte ang train law, talagang nagdiwan kami ng pamilya ko kasi yung 3,000 to 4,000 na nawawala sa akin, nakukuha ko na siya, natutake home ko na siya. Nakatulong talaga. Hindi lang yata sa amin, pati sa lahat ng Pilipino. The rice tarification is a landmark law that reforms the country's previous dysfunctional rice policy. This was finally achieved after more than 30 years of failed attempts under previous administrations. By allowing the free market to operate, we have significantly increased the supply of rice in the country and consumers now have wider choices of rice varieties. As a result, rice prices have gone down dramatically from the levels we saw in 2018. Rice price is no longer the main contributor to our overall inflation rate. The tariffs collected from rice importers are earmarked for agricultural modernization programs that directly benefit our farmers. Red tape has been a common complaint among businesses, often cited among the leading factors that hindered investments. To address this long-standing issue, the Ease of Doing Business Act was signed into law by President Duterte in May 2018. The law streamlines and automates procedures in securing business permits and stipulates maximum processing times for government transactions. The Philippines used to have the highest corporate income tax rate in Southeast Asia. Then came the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives for Enterprises, or CREATE Act. With CREATE, the country's corporate income tax rate fell toward the regional average, making the Philippines a more attractive investment destination. CREATE also rationalized the country's problematic fiscal incentive system. Now, tax incentives are performance-based, time-bound, targeted, and transparent. A more efficient incentive system will enable the government to generate more revenues for various development programs. Over the past six years, key reforms were put in place that demonstrated how the administration prioritized the needs of businesses to bring about a healthy economy for the people. The Duterte administration also implemented a series of sin tax reforms to fund the universal healthcare program. 
The Duterte administration is the only government in Philippine history that increased excise taxes on sin products three times within one presidential term. With all game-changing tax reforms, the government generated more revenues and improved the government's finances. Better finances allowed the government to decisively respond to the COVID-19 crisis while continuing to invest in massive infrastructure projects for post-pandemic economic recovery. All of these were done within the boundaries of fiscal discipline, thus helping the Philippines keep its investment-grade credit ratings even as the world saw a wave of credit rating downgrades throughout the COVID-19 crisis. The Philippines used to underinvest in infrastructure. As a result, the country has had to contend with heavy traffic, poor market access, as well as low investment and low tourist arrivals. In response, President Duterte's Build, Build, Build program ushered in the country's golden age of infrastructure. The current administration's investments in roads, mass transport systems, irrigation and flood control facilities, airports and seaports is twice the average annual spending made by the past two administrations combined. Metro Manila is bursting at the seams. The traffic problem is unquestionable as economic costs are pegged at 3.5 billion pesos or roughly 72.17 million US dollars. On top of building new roads, we need to develop new cities where people can live and work and where business can thrive. New Clark City, a resilient and green city, is intended to be a place where people will find everything they need. Residential spaces, business spaces, a government complex that will house offices of various agencies, a sports center, schools, hospital, and a lot more, an interconnected city with direct access to an international airport that will connect you to the rest of the world. The Philippines is blessed with a highly diverse array of tourist attractions and spots. But without the necessary infrastructure, many of these places would be out of reach to our travelers. Thanks to build, build, build numerous airports, seaports, bridges, and thousands of kilometers of roads have been built or upgraded to make tourist journeys around the country safe, convenient, and fun. The country's tourism and beautiful destinations are now more than ever easily accessible to local and foreign visitors. Over the past six years, we have constructed, developed, and rehabilitated numerous airport projects in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao so that the riding public could enjoy a more reliable and certainly more convenient travel experience. We have also upgraded many of our airports to have night flight capabilities, which means air travel to various Philippine destinations is now very possible even at sundown. Build, build, build has been a big help to the country's agriculture and fishery sector. The numerous projects of the infrastructure agencies, including farm-to-market roads, have complemented the programs of the Department of Agriculture in boosting food production in the country. Policy reforms, massive infrastructure projects, all these are game-changing initiatives. The reform momentum continues even toward the end of the Duterte presidency. Additional vital economic reforms backed by the president and his economic team were recently passed by Congress. Amendments to the Retail Trade Liberalization Act, Foreign Investments Act, and Public Service Act. These reforms will further propel the Philippine economy in its next phases of economic development, consistent with the vision adopted six years ago. The Build, Build, Build program is one of the lasting legacies of President Duterte. The unprecedented level of infrastructure investment was made possible by the tax reforms that have helped the government generate higher revenues over the years. Also, our high credit ratings brought about by the country's strong 
macroeconomic fundamentals have the ELTA source financing from domestic and international markets at very favorable terms. This has allowed us to fund massive infrastructure and human capital development projects. We created more employment opportunities and we strengthened the country's investment climate towards a robust, sustainable, and more inclusive economic growth. This is a testament to this administration's commitment to deliver on the promise of a better quality of life for the Filipino people.